Hey guys, welcome back to Bad Luck Garage. Let's get over here and get this hot side put back together. Alright guys, so some of you are going to think this is the dumbest shit you've ever seen, and some of you are going to think, wow, that's a really good idea. So I wanted to check out my flex joint in my crossover pipe here because I couldn't remember if it had the internal braiding and if it did I wanted to you know probably cut this open take it out but I didn't want to have to cut it open for no reason obviously I couldn't look inside past the bins so what I did is I took my little GoPro session and I taped it to the end of a piece of dash 10 hose but any hose will work and I fished it in you can see where I marked on the tape how far I would have to go to get to the flex joint. So I fished it in, linked it to my phone first through the Bluetooth app. I took a small LED flashlight, one of those Free Harbor Freight jobs, and I taped it to another piece of hose, fished it in from the other side, and this is what I got. Instant inspection camera on my iPhone. If you guys can see that, that's the inside of my flex joint. Uh, you can see there's no braiding. This has just got the bellows inside, which is what I wanted. And I can actually, I don't know if you guys can see this good because of the the lighting out here, but you know, I can I can grab my my hose down here and move, you know, move my camera around to see what I want to see. I was able to inspect my flex joint. It does not have the braiding inside. It's just a bellow. It looks like it's in real good shape. So as you guys could see, there it is. There is my little GoPro session hooked to the end of the hose with just a piece of tape. And then the other end, there's my flashlight. All right guys, so we got our crossover pipe, you know, inspected. Um, I just want to say there were like like you can kind of see I don't know if you can see it on the camera but you can see where uh, some soot has been bleeding through on the v-bands real bad over here on this one and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm at yeah see all that soot that's all soot that has bled through so those were exhaust leaks guys so I'm gonna try to use a little copper RTV on those when I put it all back together so We've got our janky ass down pipe here. We're going to be welding the V-band on down here at some point. Haven't figured out where yet. But you can see right here, this is where it's been rubbing on the frame. So that's the, like in the videos where I'm driving, you can hear a t -t 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 -t, almost sounds like something knocking. Uh, that's what that is. It's where my down pipe's been hitting the frame there. So we're going to try to you know get it shifted over and redo the exhaust like i said we're going to weld the v-band on here and make our quick change exhaust now up here at the front of the engine i have already replaced the gasket on this side we did not have any leaks on this side you can actually see this is the gasket from the driver's side you know no leaks no carbon anywhere you know bleeding through uh, this gasket was actually holding up good. Now, I already know, I'm actually in the process of taking the passenger side off right now, but I already know it's going to have a couple leaks in it because I can see soot on the head where it's been leaking. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Got the passenger side apart now, and here's the gasket from that. You can see where all the soot is right through here. This is the front two cylinders. Look at all the black, look at all the soot up here, and that's where it was on the head too. So I was leaking exhaust through here, and if you flip it over, in the very front, it was actually leaking exhaust on the back side as well. You guys had advised me not to use this type of gasket. I just had it on hand, guys, so I went ahead and threw it in there, but it definitely leaks. Definitely don't recommend these for turbo applications. We're going to put our multi-layer steel gaskets back in and 
start slapping this thing back together got our new gasket on this side um, I'm about to put the crossover pipe back on and what we're gonna do like I mentioned earlier we're gonna put a little bit of uh, copper RTV on the v-bands here hopefully they'll seal a little better this time I don't think they're warped but I am thinking that maybe these clamps where I've taken them off and on so many times uh, maybe they have actually flared out inside so they're not fully compressing the clamps the way they should but uh, hopefully the RTV will take care of that all right guys so I guess we are going to attempt to put this crossover pipe back on. Now, I'm sorry, I, I know I haven't really been filming a lot during this, but uh, you know, usually I, I try to film every little thing I'm doing here, but um, the honest to God's truth is, you know, you can either film or you can get stuff done. And I've been trying to get stuff done <laughs> because, uh, well, I need to get stuff done. So I haven't been filming like step by step, but you know, I've been trying to do little updates and show you guys what I've got accomplished, uh, you know, every few minutes or whatever. Anyway, um, crossover pipe, we are going to use some ultra copper. We're gonna put it around the flanges here on our V-bands. I don't know if this is going to help or not, but uh, we know it's been leaking around the V-band flanges, so, you know, if it works, great. Um, if I notice that it's not working, then what I'm probably going to do is get new V-bands, because like I said earlier, I'm thinking maybe the V-bands have spread out, because I've, I've taken this apart and put it back together, oh lord guys, I don't know how many times, so it might just be that, you know, the, the little pieces in the V-bands themselves are spreading apart. Um, and you know, so it's just not clamping the V bands together as forcefully as it used to. Also, I know on this side, you know, we've got the weight of the turbo too. And all that weight is kind of on this V band. And I've been trying to think of a way to brace this, but I, I mean, I've got a bolt down here, you know, it's actually a ground bolt on the side of the block. And I don't know guys, I just don't know how I could run a brace down that would actually be helpful. And I can't really run a brace over to the head here because eventually we're gonna have an air conditioner compressor right here. So, like I said, I just don't know. Now, I'm, I may be switching to polyurethane engine mount soon. And if I do, then I might actually think about bracing the turbo, you know, off the inner fender or something. And the reason I'm saying inner fender is because, you know, the inner fender actually has some give to it, guys. So when the engine moves a little bit, this inner fender can move a little bit with it. It's not like solid mount, like if I was mounting it to the frame. So it could give some support, but at the same time, some give as the engine moves a little bit. So I don't know. We'll just, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it if this doesn't work. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just hoping that it'll seal. I need to get a better job or I make enough money to pay people to do this for me. I can just be, uh, I can just be one of those vlog channels, you know, where I don't actually do shit to my own car. Just like, yeah, here's my new Corvette. Take it to the shop. They're going to put on this turbo and tune it for me. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, I don't think that the type of people who watch my channel really would appreciate that. <laughs> I'm actually going to let this set up for about 10 minutes and change my gloves and then we'll come back and put it on. Unrelated, but while we wait, uh, I actually had a guy that was asking about the eBay turbo blanket for the turbo. <laughs> Uh, he was just asking how it was holding up. Oh, well, there were one of the springs. But uh, anyway, as you guys can see, turbo blanket is holding up good. Um, it is, well, actually, I was about to say it's it's 
coming apart around the seam here a little bit but that's actually where i snagged it with the v-band when i was taking it apart you can see the other side's perfectly fine um uh, but yeah when i was i got it pinched in the v-band there or it was pinched in the v-band i tried to take the blanket off and, and i kind of tore it there a little bit but uh so other than user error uh this guy's holding up good it has been about 15 minutes i'm gonna try to slap this puppy together i feel like these v-bands are spreading out they're getting kind of wore out So even if they do seal, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to replace them. Get another set. Now here's something else that some of you might not realize about V-bands, but once they get to a certain point, getting them any more tight is not gonna help them seal any better. So, you know, like honestly, I don't even know if you can see me. Like honestly, you're, you should, you know, you should have your flange, your flanges should already be all the way together. When you put the V-band on, the purpose of the V-band isn't really to pull them together. The purpose of the V-band is to just hold them in the position you've already got them in, you know. So like the, it's kind of hard to explain guys, but like, like if this is the inside of the v-band clamp okay so it kind of goes over it like that and it has just a little bit of a arch to it so it'll kind of snug them up a little bit but the problem is the more you take them on and off that you know opens up more and more and it gets to the point where it's it's not really holding them together good anymore and i you know i think that's kind of what i got going on here is i've just taken these apart and put them back together so many times i think they're just pretty well wore out so uh, I might look at getting a new set of clamps on here. So now I'm going to set my turbo over here and figure out how to clock my drain. All right, so the turbo's right here. Drain line goes under here. And pretty much needs to point toward the back corner of the flange. And you guys will be happy to know that I actually went and got my stainless steel hardware that I was talking about in the last video. So we should be good to go here. Oh yes, here we go. The joys of putting a turbo on a awkward angled flange by yourself. Why is it awkward angled? <laughs> because two awkward guys designed it that way. That's why. Put our bolt through. Put our lock washer on. I said <laughs> we'll put our lock washer on. I swear we're going to put our lock washer on. There we go. <laughs> fighting me guys it's fighting me put our nut on gotta get your nut guys if you can't get your nut what are you doing in life my wife is a little bitty and she has tiny hands <laughs> It's times like this. I wish she enjoyed this more. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, guys, uh, you know, she loves the truck and all that. She's just not much into the, the actual, you know, working on vehicles aspect of it. But she likes driving it. Get on there. Stubborn ass biatch. Yay. Got one in. That was harder than prom night to get in. <laughs> oh. 
probably shouldn't have said that, huh? Especially since I have three daughters. It's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. The wife got me these nice ratcheting wrenches and what am I doing? <laughs> Using the open end. I swear. Sometimes I just don't think right, guys. All right, now the thing about these, these flange bolts is, you know, in case nobody's told you, what you want to do is, uh, you know, kind of try to tighten them evenly. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to like just snug the crap out of the top two and then not snug the bottom two and you know, I mean, you could, first off, you could warp the flange. Uh, second off, you can distort the gasket. And, you know, if you distort the gasket, obviously, it's not going to seal well. So, you know, you, you want to kind of just walk your way around, guys. I said it in another video, but I actually, I was giving my wife crap for years about uh, about getting me some ratcheting wrenches and it kind of became like a a joke because you know we don't have a, a bunch of money i mean i don't make i don't make a ton of money guys and so it, it became like an ongoing joke i was like every year for father's day for christmas for my birthday you know i'd be like yeah man it sure would be nice to have some of those craftsman ratcheting wrenches and she didn't get them for me, guys. I mean, I, I was doing that for like four years. And then finally, this year, it's actually in a video. Uh, this year for Valentine's Day, she finally got them for me. And i tell you what, I don't know how I've lived without them for so long because these things are awesome. <laughs> I mean, talk about saving your wrist, especially like the bolt I was just on, where it's a real tight area and you don't have a lot of room to wrench and normally I would have to like go ink and then pull it off put it back on and ink but now it's just like click 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 love it I know most of you guys probably already have ratchet and wrenches and you're like yeah man whatever like I've had them for 20 years but I have it and I'm telling you I'm happy as heck to have them now <laughs> and I'm happy as heck that I got a wife that bought them for me it was awesome Something else I don't know if you guys realize, but when you're tightening a bolt and a nut, what you're actually supposed to do is tighten the nut and hold the bolt, okay? Now, like in this instance here where I'm at, I know you guys can't see it, but I, I can't do that. I'm having to tighten the bolt and hold the nut. And the problem with that is that nut, like this is not going to be as tight as it should be, you know, that kind of sucks. But anyway, just a, a little tech tip there. <laughs> if you're tightening a, a nut and a bolt, always tighten the nut, hold the bolt. All right, guys, now I want to show you an uh, issue that we're going to have to take care of. This adapter is not going to work. This is a two inch. That's the adapter we made like 20 videos ago. Um, the issue I've got right now is an issue that I pretty much knew I was going to have. This compressor housing is a lot bigger than the old compressor housing. So it's putting the outlet out like almost dead even with our... Uh, you know, with our, where our intercooler piping comes out. Matter of fact, if I brought the three inch intercooler piping out, it would actually run right smack into the top of this. So we're gonna have to figure out some kind of funny solution. Like I might actually have to clock this one different. Like the problem is the wastegate's right here. So I really can't clock it back up any or the outlet's gonna be hitting on the wastegate. So I, I really don't know how I'm gonna do this like the only way i could see to really do it i don't know probably what we're going to do is 
we're going to fire this thing up and take it up to John's house and probably just try to make some kind of adapter. I mean, I've got some two and a half inch boots that can go on this, but we might have to make like a, <laughs> almost like a sink trap. Like it might have to come down and then come back up and in or something like that because we're not gonna be able to cut that sharp angle to just go straight in like this because I know the camera's not down there so you, can, you can't really tell, but you know, my flange is coming out like pretty much even with that, which is not good because it's even with it like height wise, but when you look at it from the top, it's actually exiting over to the right of it a little bit. So, I mean, it's not a big deal, guys. I, you know, it's just something I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of weird pipe angle or something. Like what we might do is just take a piece of three inch exhaust pipe and put it in here and, you know, cut a hole in the bottom of it, drop down with a piece of two and a half inch exhaust pipe and like cut the sides out of both of them, weld them together and then weld in you know take a piece of metal and and form it and and weld it in at the bottom to make it where this can just come straight down and over to it i mean <laughs> that's a good thing about having a welder is you know you don't have to find stuff that fits you can make stuff that fits right and we can mark this off this off we got the rtv on we can mark that off Got our drain attached to the bottom of the turbo. Mark that off. I think I'm pretty much done for today. So we're gonna call it quits. And we checked out our flex joint. That was good. Uh, we got everything inspected. Got all our gaskets changed out. Got the hot side put back together. The new turbo is on. All I have to do is hook up the drain line to the oil pan, which honestly, I'll probably do that off video here in just a second. Once that drain line's hooked up, before I actually fire this thing off, uh, or before I attach the top oil feed line, what I'm gonna do is, is pour some oil into the top of the turbo, and you know then we'll screw the feed line back in, and we're good to go there. Now, I know lots of you guys have, have been saying, you know, hey man, don't forget to pre-lube it. I always pre-lube everything like that. Um, it's really not necessary though. I mean, there's actually oil already in the turbo. You can see it dripping out, but I always pre-lube everything anyway, and I mean everything. So anyway, guys, I just want to take a minute to thank all my subscribers. Uh, you guys are real help, helpful, man. I, I love all the comments you guys leave, all the suggestions. I do take them all to heart. I hope you've seen that over the last couple videos because basically I've spent the last few videos just doing all the little checks and, and switching out parts that you know you guys have recommended. And you know, a lot of you guys were right about a lot of stuff, you know, I, I, I mean, there was a lot of stuff that I need to change out, a lot of stuff I shouldn't have done in the first place, but, you know, it's a learning process for me. Like I said, this is my first turbo build. I'll say it again, always been a nitrous guy. So I'm kind of learning as I go. And, you know, as I learn, I'm trying to share my knowledge with those of you who are watching who haven't done this before. And at the same time, I'm trying to take advice from those of you who are watching who have done it before and you're kind of trying to help me out so it's kind of like a big knowledge sharing thing here and you know and that's what i intended it to be from the start i mean that's that's great guys i love how we're all just kind of you know sharing what we know and and we're all learning as we go so again if you're one of those subscribers thank you very much love you guys like i always say you keep me motivated and uh and, and that's great man if you're not a subscriber uh you know take the time now hit that subscribe button if you like what you see if you want to see more and also for all my subscribers current and you know in the future make sure you click the little bell there the little notification bell because i actually had one of you uh that told me today wow man you've already put out five videos and i didn't know you'd put another video out in a while so that's because you haven't clicked the little bell if you click the little bell there it'll notify you uh i'm not sure if you get an email or or if it just notifies you when you go on YouTube, but it'll let you know that I've put out another video, that way you don't miss anything. So once again, click the thumbs up button if you like this video, share it with a friend, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.